the 19th Conference of Parties of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change is about to start in a couple of days. Uh, it will be held in Warsaw in Poland over two weeks, the next from Monday next week until two more weeks after that. Um, we are hoping that the Warsaw meeting will lay the groundwork for uh, putting in place all the activities that need to be done in order to get a, a good outcome in 2015 at the 21st Conference of Parties, which will be held in December 2015 in Paris, France. So this is a very important milestone on the way. There will be one more Conference of Parties in between Warsaw and Paris, which will be next year in December 2014 in Lima in Peru. And one of the major lessons of the previous uh, occasion when we tried to do something like this was in Copenhagen, which failed uh, to achieve the agreement, was that we left everything till the last minute. So nothing was agreed until everything was agreed. And because everything was not agreed, nothing was agreed, even, even though some parts could have been agreed. And so going into Paris, we, we want to avoid that mistake and not leave everything till the end try and wrap up things that we can wrap up early, particularly in start the process in Warsaw, but have something done in COP20 in Lima and Peru, and not just wait till the end in Paris. So that's one major lesson, to try and have a, a milestone in, in Lima and try and achieve some activities there. Uh, and also to be able to collectively raise the level of ambition. One of the other bigger differences between uh, the situation that we had in Copenhagen and the situation that we will have in Paris is that in Copenhagen there was still a reluctance from a number of parties to take action unless others took action. So it was very much a, we won't do anything unless somebody else does something first. And then in the end everybody blamed everyone else for not doing it. Um, we are in a very different situation now where all countries are prepared to take actions and we have many, many voluntary actions on the table. Developing countries have put forward national, uh, nationally appropriate mitigation actions and so on. Um, so everybody is willing to take action. Everybody is already taking action. That's a much more positive situation. Uh, unfortunately, if you add up all the actions and voluntary pledges made, they're not enough. They're going to take us to well above three degrees, and we want to be well below two degrees. And so the level of ambition, collective ambition from everybody has to be much higher. And that's what we need to try and achieve between now and uh, Paris in 2015, raising the level of ambition for our uh, all our countries to reduce their emissions, both developed countries as well as developing countries. The other major issue is, as always, money. Uh, the $100 billion a year that has been promised by 2020 or from 2020 uh, has yet to start materializing in any substantive way. We had the fast track finance of $30 billion for three years that ended in 2012. We have a gap between 2013 and 2020 uh, and we're not quite sure how that gap is going to be met. And Annex 1 countries uh, need to come forward with some level of pledges so that we don't fall off a cliff and go into zero and then wait till 2020 till we get more money. Uh, within the financing uh, act aspects, there's an issue about finance from uh, private sources and finance from public sources. While it is indeed important to get the private sector on board and, and they should play a role, there are certain areas, particularly in adaptation in the poorest countries, where the private sector really is not unlikely to be able to play a major role, and public sector will have to step up. So Annex 1 countries are going to have to put money from their public purse into helping adaptation in the, particularly the least developed countries. So that's an aspect of funding that is not likely to be filled by the private sector. And finally, in Warsaw, one of the major issues that came up in Doha that will hopefully be resolved in Warsaw was a new and emerging issue of loss and damage. And this relates to issues uh, relating to our failure to mitigate, our failure to adapt sufficiently, and therefore having to deal with inevitable and unavoidable losses and damages that are going to occur in future due to human-induced climate change. Uh, the Doha decision talked about considering an international mechanism on loss and damage, uh, developing countries, particularly the small island states and the least developed countries, will come forward with propositions in Warsaw. Uh, we hope that we will be able to uh, agree on something so that Warsaw will see the, the making or the acceptance of the uh, uh, announcement of an international mechanism on loss and damage. So that would be 
a, a relatively new thing happening in Warsaw. Most of the other things will be re retreading old stuff that we already knew and trying to get some more ambition into them. But the new item will be the international mechanism on loss and damage, which is what I will be following. So I'll be providing uh, updates on that over the course of the next two weeks.